What you doing way out here, little Joe? You're likely to get your brains out walking in this sun. Uh, Krusty, you know I couldn't go through the day without my constitutional. Uh, my horse spooked up in the mountains while I was checking fence. Probably halfway back to the Ponderosa by now. <laughs> well, I should have known you wouldn't be walking. You could avoid it. Well, come on aboard. Oh, of course, uh, when we get to Virginia City, I'm going to have to charge you for the 15 miles. Uh, anything's better than walking. What's the delay? Get along, driver. Stop the chatter. Driver, proceed immediately. All right, it's all right, folks. Just giving a friend a lift. Well, come on up here. I've been looking for someone to draw with anyway. Besides, once we get moving, it's going to be a mite cooler up here than in there. <laughs> I don't know, it's a pretty good draft when that guy opens his mouth. Now. Coach. Don't try nothing. You're a European passenger. I got no intention of trying anything. Hey, uh, look, gents, you may as well forget it and leave. We don't even have a money box aboard this trip. Flancho! I mean, shut up. Put on your gun! All right, everybody out of the coach. What's the meaning of this, sir? Uh, who are these men? Take it easy, Mr. Dubose. This is what's known out here in the West as a stage holdup. This is outrageous. Driver, I demand you do something. <laughs> With those guns pointing at me, Mr. Dubose, I've done just about everything I aim to. No, Senor Dubois, do not be foolish. He's taking the dowry. Without it, I am penniless. Better penniless than dead. Papa, don't be rash. Ricard is right. place to lie close in Virginia City. appearances were deceiving. Your father got is not near as badly hurt as we first thought. Ah, that is good news. Little Joe, it was a wise move on your part to bring him here instead of the longer ride to Virginia City. He's regained consciousness then. Oh, oh yes, he certainly has. As a matter of fact, I had to give him a powder to keep him quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Little lady, your father certainly has gumption. You know he's just aching to get up and take after those road agents. He, uh, he wants to bring back some sort of a chest. I told him it was silly. It's not silly, it's my diary. Ricardo, what are you waiting for? Why do you not go after those bandits? But, my dearest one, I was so concerned about your father. Now, I will go after those bandidos. Oh, Don Ricardo, that, that isn't necessary. My sons are out scouting the countryside right now. I'm sure they'll catch up with them very soon. In the meanwhile, Ben, Mr. Dubois must remain quiet. He's got to stay in bed at least three or four days. 
And I've got to get back to town. I'll look in on your father tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Not at all. Bye. Excuse me, I must go to my father. Oh, uh, mademoiselle, your father is resting now. Don't you think it might be better not to disturb him? Why don't you sit down here? We'll all have some refreshment. Hmm? I want to thank you, monsieur. You have been very kind to extend us your hospitality. Well, I'm only sorry that you had such a bad experience. But our home is open to you, and I hope you'll feel as comfortable as possible. You are most gracious, senor. No, oh, we, we are all very much in your debt. Not at all. Ricardo, what will happen if my diary will not be found? Mademoiselle, you... You might have lost your lives. No, no, no. You, you do not seem to understand, senor. You see, the dowry was worth almost $100,000. Well, well, didn't you think it was kind of risky carrying such a fortune all the way from New Orleans? We planned for the marriage to take place at a mission on my ranchero in California. It's an old family custom. As for the wedding, well, senor, the dowry must be there for everyone to see. Oh, I, uh, I didn't realize that the dowry had to be at the wedding ceremony. It's an ancient custom for both our families. Oh, you pardon me for saying so, senor, but under those circumstances, I thought you'd be much more perturbed over the theft of the chest. I do not wear my emotions on my sleeve, senor Cartwright. I am perturbed, deeply perturbed. Oh, not over the loss of the dowry itself. I'm a wealthy man in my own right. But unless the dowry is recovered, or replaced. The custom of my family will forbid me to marry my lovely Michelle. Just loving the girl isn't enough. La love is the least important thing in a marriage between two families such as ours. Oh, I see. You don't love her. Uh, Joseph. I did not say that, my friend. Please, Ricardo. Must we drag such intimate matters into the open? Uh, Miss Dubois is absolutely correct, Joseph. This is none of our concern. Uh, Mademoiselle, perhaps you would like to rest. Your room is upstairs right next to your father's. I'd be happy to show Mr. Dubois our room. Merci, monsieur. Uh, Don Ricardo, your room is right over here. Oh, gracias. No, I'm not tired. Uh, but I would like to use this time to explore your ranchero. I'm sure that uh, Joseph would be very happy to show you around just as soon as you're ready. Yes, that would be a wise idea. Your son seems most eager to help. Um, would you, uh, let's have some brandy. Well, senor, I'm ready. You and your father have been most gracious hosts. I'm hoping to learn from your advanced techniques. Well, we better get started. Oh, it's not necessary for you to waste your time, senor. I'm perfectly capable of finding my own way. Well, are you sure you can make it all right by yourself? Positive, amigo. Just point me in the direction to your branding corral. Anything you say, senor. Adios. He's doing very well for a man who had a bullet in him only yesterday. Why shouldn't I do well? With such friends as you have turned out to be and your valiant son risking their lives to recover an old man's treasure. I would be very <laughs> ungrateful to do otherwise. One more. One more, Papa. Merci. It's all finished. Oh, I'll take it down to the kitchen. Good. You have a very devoted daughter. Oh, yes. Ah. Well, it's good to see you looking so much better. Thank you. 
First time we've had to talk. I don't know how to thank you. Well, the mere presence of a gentleman such as yourself and such a lovely daughter is uh, quite sufficient, thanks. Oh, <laughs> Michelle is lovely. Yes. She's like her mother was. Huh? Uh, she died when Michelle was a baby. Perhaps it is just as well, for she didn't see my once ample fortune wiped out completely. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, foolish investments dissipated it completely. Everything except the dowry. I was determined not to touch that. And I was equally determined that Michelle should have a proper marriage. Uh, my family is one of the finest ones in New Orleans, directly descended from the French royalty. And uh, Senor Fernandez? He is directly descended from the Spanish royalty. And when Fernandez told me about his vast ranchero here in the West, it was obvious that he can provide for my daughter properly. And uh, her dowry <laughs> pleased him very much, too. Why is a dowry so important to a man of wealth such as uh, Senor Fernandez? How can you describe the sky to a blind man? <laughs> <laughs> Our customs are ingrained in us. All I can say that. Dowry is a, a, a very important element in a marriage between families such as Dubois and Fernandez. Oh, I've, I've been making you talk much too much, and I'm terribly sorry. You should be resting now. Oh, no, no, no. I hope you rest no. very comfortably. Thank you. You are very kind. Not at all. seems fair. There's only three of them. That's right, brother. I tell you what, you take the one with the bad wing and I'll take the other two. Well, I was thinking it ought to be the other way around. You're surrounded. Drop your gun. Working there, Adam? Yeah, I'll take a good look, because it's a rare sight indeed. Very, very funny. Hey, you got the chest. What happened to the bandits? Adam, boss? Well, what happened? We got the jewels back, Paul, but we missed the thieves. Well, I wouldn't worry about them as long as we got, got the girl's dowry back. Yeah, but suppose the dowry turned out to be worthless. Now, what does that mean? Well, take a look at that. It's chipped. What? Beautiful workmanship. Jewels look like glass. What? They're imitations. <laughs> oh, no imitations. Joe, is this the very same chest they took off the stagecoach? I can't be sure. It looks like the same one. Well, I was one sure way to find out. But let's ask them. Now, let's, uh, let's keep what we know to ourselves for the time being. 
Better mind we fix the hinge on this chest so Mr. Dubois won't know that anybody's tampered with it, huh? Let's get in the barn. Sort of peculiar, ain't it? Yeah. You know, I was just thinking, though, about, uh, about what Fernandez said about no dowry, no wedding. Yeah? I just wonder if, uh, if he finds out the dowry's a fake. Maybe there'll still be no wedding. Now listen, Joe. If you got any notions about that gal, you forget them. Them Spaniards has got a temper plumb up to there. He'll tear you apart if you even wink at that gal. Buenos dias, senor. Hi. Well, I have been inspecting your uh, irrigation system. Ingenioso. I shall have my payance installed one like it on my own ranchero. Thank you. This is my brother, Hoss. Hi. Ah, the brothers who pursued the bandidos, eh? That's right. You were unsuccessful, eh? Well, not exactly. We got the chest back. And the bandidos? Well, seemed like they was a little more interested in saving their hides than they was the chest. Well, I shall never be able to thank you enough for your heroic efforts. If it hadn't been for you and your brother, the dowry would have been lost forever. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I must go and tell Michelle the good news. I wonder how he's gonna feel when he finds out those jewels are phony. I don't know. I know how he's gonna feel if he catches you fooling around with that gal. You leave her alone, you hear? Yes, sir. My dear Michelle, have you heard the news? The dowry has been recovered. Oh, Ricardo, marvelous. Now we can get married. Does it not please you? Hmm? Oh, of course, of course. Now our plans can proceed without delay. Ricardo? Ever since we have left New Orleans, you scarcely seem to see me. You go for rides by yourself, you take walks alone. Does it not occur to you that, uh, that I might like to accompany you? I have much on my mind. Still, my dear, there will be lots of times for rides and walks on my own ranchero after we are married. Sometimes I think it would have been much nicer if we had been married in New Orleans. Well, it's as I told you before, the padre who lives at the mission near my ranchero, is an old friend of the family. Well, he would be heartbroken if anybody but he officiated at my wedding. Now, you really must excuse me, my dear. I must not keep your father waiting. Does it not matter if I am kept waiting? Petulance does not become you, my flower. Soon you are going to be the donna of my ranchero, and you must learn to be gracious at all times. Now, I must go to tell your father about the recovery of the dowry. mind at all. I don't want to be a bother to you. Oh, not you bother me. <laughs> Are you sure I don't bother you? Well, you know, I'm not exactly sure. You want to hand me another spike? What's a spike? It beats heck out of me, huh? Ricardo, fortune has smiled on an old man. The dowry has been recovered. Mr. Cartwright just brought it back to me. Yes, I came by this afternoon to tell you, but you were asleep. Well, indeed, we are all fortunate. We're all fortunate. And especially to see you recovering so rapidly, Senor Dubois. Well, the Dubois family is not only distinguished, but hardy. Your marriage to Michel will produce children who will go strong and tall. And I am going to name my first son, Alexander. Please do not speak of such things. Why not, my child? Because Ricardo seems to regret his pledge of betrothal to me. No, that is not true. You are a prize to be cherished above all others. A man could have a wife no more charming or beautiful. If you find me so attractive, 
Why do you not suggest a stroll in the moonlight? It's a lovely night and it's proper. We are engaged. Well, because to walk in the moonlight with one such as you is too much temptation for a mortal man like myself. Bravo, Ricardo. You are a true gentleman. The gentle part is correct, Papa. Besides, I need my rest. Tomorrow morning I plan to leave early for my ranchero. Leave? Uh, without us? Well, uh, you will be unable to travel for a week. Besides, I grow greatly worried about this absence from my ranchero. I fear that the peons are growing lazy, neglectful. You and Michel can follow later, and I will have things ready for your arrival. Oh, you are talking logically, of course. We will talk about this further in the morning before you leave. Right now, I am in need of rest. Of course, Senor Dubois. Until tomorrow. My dreams will be only of you. He is indeed an aristocrat. I am afraid you offended him. I meant to. He's so cold, so aloof. <laughs> Perhaps your young and romantic heart expects too much. Perhaps you're right, Papa. And what's more important, he can offer you what I was unable to give you in recent years. Wealth, security, servants to do your bidding. And security for you too, Papa. This is one thing I really like, Ricardo, for he insisted that you come and live with us. <sighs> it means nothing. You do to me, Papa. <sighs> You certainly couldn't have missed him by more than an inch or two. But I did miss. Uh, Papa, I... Papa, Papa, please don't get excited. Well, the bandits are trying to steal my money, my fortune, the only fortune I have. And I'm not to be excited. Oh, uh, Monsieur Dubois, Michelle is right. You must not get excited. The important thing is that your chest is safe. That gun, I reckon they got away. Well, we didn't have much chance of catching them in the dark anyway. Why she let him get away? Well, you're absolutely right. I'll tell you what, while Hoss and I get some sleep, you can have your opportunity. Now, they've tried twice to get the dowry, and chances are they'll try a third time, so why don't you just stay here and keep a uh, vigilant watch? All right? Let's go. You asked for that, little brother. Leave him out there till he gets moon blind. 
Then I take it you found absolutely nothing, huh? Uh, you got to wait slick as a whistle for. Pretty odd. Well, they were a brave bunch, sneaking in the house the way they did. Yeah, but they'd be fist-fighting mad if they discovered there wasn't nothing in that chest but a bunch of phony imitations. No, you don't get my point. They could have been given information about the chest being on the stagecoach. Yeah, but how did they know the chest was under Dubois' bed? Yeah. You know, someone had to tell them where the diary chest was kept. Oh, look at me. What about Dubois himself? Oh, I don't think so, now. Now, whether Dubois knows that the chest is worthless or not, what would he gain by arranging to have it stolen? Well, it leaves Ricardo. Yeah, but why would he want to steal it? He's going to get the dowry anyhow as soon as he marries Michelle. Mm -hmm. Well, right now, there are only two things for sure. We know the chest is worthless. The bandits think it contains a fortune. Well, what do you think we ought to do? Nothing. Not right now. You two boys go to bed. Aren't you going to go to bed? It's kind of late, Paul. No, I'm not going to bed yet. Well, with uh, Pa thinking and uh, Joe guarding, uh, what's it left for me and you to do? Not a bad burn thing. Let's go to bed. Anyway. Right. Well, they do not give up easily, this man, but I imagine after two failures, they will not try again. Do you really think so, Ricardo? Well, at least we are assured of sleep without further disturbance. I understand our host has posted guards around the house to keep us protected. For the second time, I shall say good night and also add my heartfelt respect for your vigilance and bravery. Good night. Excuse me, Papa. Wait, Ricardo. I hope that what has happened has changed your mind about going on ahead without us. Papa, in his weakened condition, shouldn't be left alone with the responsibility of the dowry. You are right, of course. No wonder I am so taken with you, my darling. I will wait, and we'll travel to California together. Papa, what's wrong with Ricardo? Why? Do you think he no longer loves me? Of course he loves you, my petite. But just now he refused to kiss me. It's something the matter with me? There's nothing the matter with you, my petite. Papa, you should go to sleep now. It's bad for you to stay up late. Come in. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Come in. Well, how are we feeling? Mr. Cartwright, will you please see that he goes to sleep? Miss Dubois, I shall be most pleased to see that he goes to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, Papa. Good night, Good night. Good night. I just drop by to make sure that everything is all right. Of course I'm all right. You like it? Beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. Thank you. I've made it myself. You made this yourself? Oui, monsieur. The creation of fine hand pieces is my hobby. It was for many years. I gave quite a few to my friends. Really? Scare you. With all the excitement, I couldn't sleep. How's your father? Oh, he's fine. He's sleeping now. Thank you. That's good. I don't think they'll be back tonight. I hope not. Such a pretty night. Yes, it is. 
You mind if I ask you a personal question? No. How can a beautiful girl like you want to marry a man who's more interested in your dowry than he is in you? Sometimes I do wonder if Ricardo is more interested in the dowry than me. Well, I know what I'd do if I was in his place. What? Why did you do it? Why did I do it? He wanted to see what I'd do if I was in his place. You know, Ricardo has never kissed me. Well, that's Ricardo's problem. Is there? Yeah, Ricardo is where? Right behind you. Right behind me. Hmm. You see it? Buenas noches, Michelle, Senor Cartwright. Ricardo, please forgive me. Forgive I... you, forgive you, forgive you for what? It's moonlight, and you are very beautiful. And Senor Cartwright is a mortal man. That's a Spanish temper? I've never been so insulted. I still don't know why she wants to marry him. Good to see you. Oh, fine. I always stop by here when I'm swinging back on my return trip. Just to yeah. drink one of these and get the dust out of my gullet. <laughs> Say, I want to thank you for taking care of little Joe the way you did. Oh, any time, any time. Oh, uh, Ben, I was wondering about that old fella. You know, the uh, one that got shot in the stagecoach hold up, that Mr. Uh... Oh, you mean Monsieur Dubois? Yeah, yeah. How is he? Oh, just fine, just fine. Come along real good. Oh, peculiar thing about that hold up. You know the other fella, the uh, Spanish dude, the one that's going to marry this Mr. Uh, Dubois' daughter? Oh, you mean Don Ricardo Fernandez? Mm. <laughs> well, he's really something. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Well, he was always talking about this big spread he has at Travis Wells in California. Yeah? <laughs> uh. Well, I was kind of curious about it, so I detoured the stage a couple of miles just to take a look at it. Huh? Found out a funny thing. Well, what did you find out? Well, you know that spread he says he owns? You mean he doesn't own it? Oh, no, he, he, he owns it all right. But the funny thing is, though, that... Well, well what's so funny about it? Now, look, would you mind piping down and let me finish my story? Well, I wish you would finish it. Well, I will as soon as I wipe some more of this alkali out of my throat. about last night. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to slap you. I was angry with Don Ricardo. I... I'm not going to marry him. I wouldn't marry a man who takes so lightly finding his intended bride in the arms of another man. Well, I have to admit, I... Uh, I wouldn't have taken the whole thing so lightly myself. I'm sure you wouldn't have. As I said, Don Ricardo has no feelings for me. Does he know yet that you've changed your mind about marrying him? No, not yet. I'll tell him when I see him. Do you know where he is? Well, I imagine he's riding around the ranch as usual. Alone as usual. Well, I'll go and tell Papa about this. Well, I 
shall never tire of riding around your magnificent Ponderosa. I have learned much. For some reason unknown to myself, I've offended you. I offer my apologies, whatever the reasons. Your words merely add further insult, Don Ricardo. But it doesn't matter now. I have something to tell you. And I shall give you my undivided attention, my dove. But before you speak, there is something that I'm forced to do. No, don't! Ricardo, why did you do it? I've decided, after all, Senor Joseph Cartwright, that your indiscretion of last night was indeed a serious insult to my name. All right, what do you want to do about it? I demand satisfaction. Oh, that's fine. Why don't you step out of the way? Okay, how do you want to get it? Like this. Oh, like that, huh? Adam! Adam! Where are you? Come on! Stop! They're going to kill each other! What are you laughing about? He's going to get hurt. Well, I wouldn't worry. Uh, Joe can take care of himself. I'm not talking about Joe. I'm talking about Don Ricardo. You get that nice suit all dirty. Well, that is life. It's a question of honor. Your brother kissed me last night. That uh, figures. It's, it's not over yet. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you. 
opponent, Senor Joseph. You, you took your beating gracefully. Oh, yeah, I thought I did. Without the gloves, you'd have never taken them. Well, what's going on here? Well, it was a pretty good fight, Pa. Uh, Ricardo here was uh, defending his honor, and uh, little brother was uh, defending himself. Uh, sorry you and Horse missed it. Where is Horse? Oh, well, uh, things were getting kind of dull around here, so uh, he took himself a little nap. Oh, he did, huh? Monsieur Cartwright, it was a terrible fight. Oh, but my Ricardo, oh, he was magnificent. Well, I wasn't so bad myself. Your son is a worthy opponent, senor. We fought to an honorable draw. Well, isn't that interesting? While you two were fighting and you were watching and Hoss was sleeping, I saw three men riding up at the dowry. My what? dowry? Yeah. Michel. Papa. Your dowry was torn. My congratulations, Senor Fernandez. Your robbery was finally a success. My robbery? Your loose words are insulting, Senor. Oh, Senor Ricardo. Let's not have another fight. You finally succeeded in having Michelle's dowry stolen. Very clever scheme. What do you mean? Uh, well, Senor Fernandez. Ricardo, did you steal my dowry? The man is a charlatan, a liar, a thief, a man without honor. Papa, please. Ricardo, why? It is simple and shameful. I do not own a rich and vast ranchero. There are just a poor few acres. There is no big hacienda. Just an old sod hut. I don't understand. You lied to me. You said that you loved me. That is the one truth in the whole miserable business. When I met you in New Orleans and conceived the idea of the dowry, I had no feeling. But on the trip across the country, watching you, speaking to you, I fell in love. And it's a fine way to make love, lying and stealing. Well, I tried to call off the robbery, but my men wouldn't hear of it when I met them on my rides around the Ponderosa. They were eager for the famous Dubois jewels. I tried to avoid you, to be called to you, so that you would not be hurt when the marriage was canceled. But my pride could not permit me to do that. I understand, Ricardo. The most important thing to me now is that you love me and that you're sorry about what happened. I love you. Michelle, love. How can you love such a man? Yes. How can you do that? After all you know about me. I do what my heart tells me. Well, you must lose this love. With all this foolishness, I'm going to go to prison. Well, that uh, kind of depends upon whether... Senor Dubois is going to uh, press charges. Papa, please forgive him. Please. Never. Monsieur Cartwright, I demand you notify the sheriff at once. Michelle, may I speak with your father alone, please? That will do no good. When he's like this, it's impossible. Please. Well, that's the way she goes. Monsieur Dubois. You just heard your daughter say that she loved Don Ricardo. Ah, love, 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 that's all I hear. He was after her dowry. Well, he confessed as much. You know, I have a bit of a confession to make myself. I, uh, I looked into your dowry chest. I saw all those magnificent jewels. They're just beautiful. One thing that bothered me, though, I, th I thought that the, the settings were not quite as... As, as, as fine as they might have been. Oh, you be the setting, <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, I think they are as good as any I've ever seen. No, I, I, I felt that they were inferior compared to the Jews themselves. Okay? And what do you mean? Oh, they are magnificent, uh, Mr. Cartwright. I am an artist. Yes, you are. Very well. I utilize my skill in making fine guns to devise a fake dowry for Michelle. She needed one. 
to be married properly. Oh, I wanted to tell them later on, sometimes it... Uh... I'm a foolish old man who couldn't even be successfully dishonest. Well, if I have to start to work like a peon in the fields, let us get on with it. Oh, remember, you're all invited to the wedding celebration at my ranchero in two weeks. Uh, can I kiss the bride? Joseph? I can't kiss the bride. <laughs> you're going to meet that stage in Virginia, so you better get going. Have a good trip. Right. Thank you. Bye.